I don't know. I don't believe in coincidence anymore. But uh, uh, when we went for mass this morning, I never realized that the topic is exactly about this repentance and faith. Who among you have uh, attended the uh, holy mass already? Right? It's about the beautiful uh, story of uh, a forgiving father. Right? Uh, the story of the prodigal son. We all we are all familiar with the story. Uh, we always. Uh, thought the story was about the prodigal son. But now my take to that story is, is the story of the forgiving father. And that's, that's what, what repentance and faith is all about. Uh, we are so blessed that uh, we have a forgiving father. It doesn't matter what we've done. It doesn't matter where we've been. It doesn't matter whether we've done bad things. He will, he will continue to forgive us. Of course, that's not a license to do, to do bad things, right? <laughs> and then, and then uh, tell yourself, okay, I can do this now because uh, tomorrow God will forgive me. It's not like that. So it's, it's just illustrative of the wonderful grace of uh, God's forgiveness. And to, in my life, the, the, most, uh, the greatest manifestation of God's forgiving love and God's grace is my family. Uh, as uh, Bro Noel mentioned, uh, we've been married, uh, me and my wife, May. That's my beautiful wife, May. Please wave. And <laughs> uh, so we've been married for 28 years. I, I cannot claim credit for that. She cannot claim credit for that as well. But this is simply God's grace. Um, later, during the talk, you will realize why it's really God's grace. Because uh, we alone cannot... Uh, cannot uh, presume or assume to to live a normal married life how many of uh, you are couples here well, praise god so we have three couples and then the rest are not married singles uh, no husbands no boyfriends oh. okay so so we'll, we'll, we'll pray for that, that sisters. By the way, uh, our service in, in CFC is uh, we're, we're in the Singles for Christ. That's our ministry. Um, but uh, yeah, going back to my family. So this is, uh, this is my, our three children. Uh, that's the eldest, uh, Alexis. Uh, guess uh, how young she is? She's 28. Exactly the number of years we were married. So she's a miracle baby. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, we got married uh, civilly October 2010. Ah, uh, 2001. Uh, no. Civil. Okay. Oh, oh, 1990. Oh, sorry, sorry. 1990. Yeah. So my me memory is uh, a little bit uh, hazy because of the haze happening all over Singapore. Um. So, yeah, we got married October. The following year, March, Alexis was born. She's a miracle baby. <laughs> so, and then uh, LJ, well, he's uh, 24 now. So, and then Sabrina, she's uh, 16. So they're all actively serving in the community as well. Uh, both uh, LJ and Alexis, they're in uh, Singles for Christ. Uh, Sabrina is in... Um, Youth for Christ. So, this uh, whole Christian Life program, uh, this is talk for, right? This is the end of module one. It's, uh, I call it uh, God's uh, love story between all of us. And th that's really God's love story. The greatest manifestation of that uh, love is Jesus Christ himself, right? Um, I often, of course, we cannot really understand the whole wisdom of God. We don't have the capacity to understand God because God is God and we are humans, right? But sometimes you, you wonder, why did Jesus Christ have to suffer for all of us to redeem us from the original sin? God could have just probably uh, taken out his magic wand and then changed the world to a happy place. Do you ever wonder? But, but no, God... God uh, wanted that to happen. So, 
for whatever reason. But that's just the true manifestation of God's love for all of us. Um, he came down to earth, became humans, experienced uh, how to love, how to be sad, how to be disappointed. He experienced suffering. and For what? To save all of us, each and every one of us. And for that, we should all be thankful. So, of course, there's only one response that God hopes for. But uh, he's, not, he's not an imposing God. He's not a dictator. He gave us what? Uh, he gave us free will, right? Brothers and sisters, to choose between right and wrong. He gave that to our forefathers, to Adam and Eve. Uh, in fact, if probably they did not have that free will, they should not have eaten the, the apple from the Garden of Eden. And we're still living in the Garden of Eden up to now. Can you imagine how happy would we would have been we were running naked in the Garden of Eden now? They, they, they. <laughs> I'll just move on. <laughs> they, they don't get the image. <laughs> um, so, so this is our response: repentance and faith. It's a double action word: um, repentance and faith. In fact, earlier the the previous slide before we load that, loaded up this slide, uh, it's actually the title of this talk is repentance and faith. But, but. Earlier, it was in reverse, faith and repentance. But I was, I was thinking in my seat, yeah, it makes sense. We, not, we must have faith first before we repent, right? Why would we even give up our, our, uh, our sin, sinful lives and, uh, and, uh, and fun lives if, if we don't believe in God, right? So maybe we should have it in reverse. We'll tell the editors of the book, bro, <laughs> to put it faith and repentance rather than repentance and faith. I, I think now faith must come first before repentance. You know. Bro Rommel is uh, our batchmate, right? Uh, Fourteen years ago, we we sat in this in the same um, uh, Christian Life program. Fourteen years ago, yeah. You know. Later, you ask him what I was sharing during the during the discussion group. <laughs> <laughs> so, the call to the call to repentance actually came from Jesus Christ Himself in. In Mark 1, verses uh, 14 to 15, this is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. This is actually the start of the ministry of Jesus Christ. This is right after he was baptized by, uh, by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. And then he went to, to the desert, 40 days and 40 nights. After he came out of the desert, uh, Herod had uh, John the Baptist arrested already. So, so this is this is the start of his uh, of his ministry. Two thousand years ago, he gave the call to repent and believe in the good news that he brings to all of us. So repentance and faith, as I said, they they go hand in hand. And so, and what could be the and not what? Who could be the biggest uh, example of? Repentance among the saints. You know who this person is? Who speaks in, to, to us in Acts 20, verse 18 and 21. You know, I have lived among, the whole time, among you the whole time from the, from the day I first came to the province of Asia. I earnestly bore witness for both Jews and Greeks to repentance before God and to faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Any guesses? Who's this saint? Speaking in the Acts of the Apostles, um, Saint Paul. Saint Paul, he is the greatest example of person who repented. Remember, Saint Paul used to be called Saul, the persecutor of the early Christians. He was there during the stoning and martyrdom of the first saint, Saint Stephen. He was persecuting the Christians at that time because he was he was a Pharisee. He's part of the Sanhedrin, the, leader, the religious leaders during, during that time, who did not believe in Jesus Christ because of their own hypocrisy. And he too, in fact, he was the one who volunteered to persecute the early Christians on behalf of the Pharisees to kill the, to kill the movement, the Christian movement, the early Christian movement. But uh, God needed to convert him. 
God will go out of His way, by the way. Uh, it happened to me. God will go out of His way, of his way despite of our stubbornness. Despite uh, of St. Paul's stubbornness, he, he, he converted Paul. How? During, during one of his trips to go to Damascus, he, want, he, he was persecuting the early Christians who were, uh, who were uh, giving the good news of uh, Jesus Christ to, to those people in the early days. And then, what did God do? He talked to, he talked to St. Paul, Saul back then, and told him, uh, why are you persecuting me? Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? So, it's like uh, God spoke in a blinding light. So he was blinded for, I don't know how many days, but but he was only healed of his blindness after after one of the disciples uh, came to him uh, and uh, healed him of his blindness. After that, he started believing in Jesus Christ and he became the most powerful uh, witness of Jesus Christ during that time. In fact, um, come to think of it, if if Jesus Christ just relied on the 12 apostles to spread the good news, probably it, would, it wouldn't have reached Asia. The most zealous uh, uh, preacher of them all was St. Paul. He came all the way to Turkey. This is, this is where he was speaking these words. He was, uh, he was going back to Jerusalem. Uh, he didn't know what will happen to him in Jerusalem, but he went back anyway to face uh, the consequences. So, so we all know that he, along with the other apostles, eventually died on the cross. So that's St. Paul. Yeah, that's, that's a whole other uh, Christian life uh, program. We should develop <laughs> something of that sort. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful life. So I recommend that you read about his life. Uh, and I'm thankful for this Christian life program because I, 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 I get myself into reading all these uh, materials uh, as well. So what is repentance? Um, uh, uh, bro Ronnie, yeah. what is repentance? Uh, for me, maybe repentance is uh, sincere regret. Sincere regret. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's good uh, good two words. Sincere regret. So yeah. You know, so that means uh, from the bottom of your heart, you really you really. Are. So, but first, before we talk about repentance. Let's talk about what it's not. It's not dependent on feelings like uh, sometimes uh, in your encounters, in your daily encounters, whether in the family or in, at work, uh, sometimes you feel, uh, is something wrong with that, with, with that brother of mine, with that sister of mine? How come he's not talking to me like, like it was before? So sometimes you feel, did I do something wrong? So, and sometimes... You, you you just you just want to find out you, you approach the brother or the sister hey did I say or do anything wrong to you how come you're not no I'm just busy so sometimes it's like that so but it's not dependent on feelings so uh, repentance is also not being sorry for your sins because of our sins because of fear of the adverse consequences of sin of course we know the uh, adverse consequences of sin right we won't go to heaven does anyone here who, is there anyone here who doesn't want to go to heaven? Oh, not definitely not me. I want to go to heaven. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is, of course, that's the consequence of sin. If we don't go to heaven, then there's only one, one place we'll go to, yeah. and we all know where that is. Uh, repentance uh, is uh, defined by the Greek word. Uh, it's uh, came from the Greek word metanoia. It's a change of mind. Is a change of direction. It's turning away from from sin, evil, and wrongdoing. So that's that's repentance. And then, what are those wrongdoings? So you should avoid the, being involved in uh, cults. Is anyone here practicing witchcraft? Anything like that? Hope not. Uh, serious crime? Has anyone here robbed a bank or anything like that? Or been to jail? So, hope not. Uh, biases, we have a lot of those. Uh, in fact, that's, that's, the, that's the main reason why I kept postponing attending Christian Life Program. Uh, guess how many times I said no to the Christian Life Program before I said yes? 
Bro, how many times were you invited to the Christian level? Oh, praise God, praise God. So, at least uh, there, there are not many stubborn people like me. <laughs> so, I, I kept postponing it for five years from 2000 to 2005. I, I kept saying no, 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 no. So, maybe I said yes because I knew Brother Rommel would be there. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so, so vices like uh, drinking, being drunk, or uh, hope none of you is in drugs. I was. Remember those uh, blue, yellow, and white uh, tablets that I used to take? Because I used to suffer a condition called manic depression when I was, uh, how, how old was I? 17 years old, 18 years old, you know. And that was, uh, that was also the happiest moment of my life. Ask me why. Because uh, when I was 17, 18 years old, that's when I courted me. Yeah. And, and imagine that it's, uh, in community, we call the, the better half, uh, GG, God's gift. To me, she's triple G, God's greatest gift. Yeah. <laughs> and and it's true, it's true. I mean, of course, I didn't used to say this. That was 1997. That, uh, that was 1987-88. So of course, 1987-88, I don't talk this way. I don't even consider her a God's gift that time. I only say this in recent years after joining the uh, Christian Life Program. So, so she's... Uh, he will start calling you for uh, four G's, uh, God's greatest gorgeous gift. Oh, you, you can add more G's, huh? <laughs> oh, so yeah, that, 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 that was the life before. So, and then, of course, sexual wrongdoing. Uh, this is my favorite scene before. So, so yeah. Uh, are any of you brothers into this? See me after this session. <laughs> uh, no, kidding, kidding aside, uh, which is why I, I say at the beginning that uh, 20 years of marriage is no joke. It's totally God's grace because, uh, I don't know, uh, I've, uh, I've played it back in my head. Uh, how many of my girlfriends would have stick around uh, given what I've done during our married life. Siya lang. Haba na lang. No choice. <laughs> Siya lang. Siya lang. Uh, and it's really serious. Like, uh, uh, in fact, after the Christian Life Program, um, uh, so we attended the Christian Life Program, we finished it around December. So right after the Christian Life Program, we went back to Manila. Uh, as always, my friends and my my brothers, brother-in-laws, brothers-in-law, or her, her two brothers, um, uh, are expecting. Oh, Kuya Jobert is in town, so we will paint the town red. So, as always, you expect that we will go out to those uh, CD places somewhere in Pasay. Uh, I don't know if they still exist. I've not been there for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in one of those occasions, uh, we, we were going up the establishment, if we can call that establishment. Uh, people were rushing down the stairs. Uh, in Tagalog, they said, Pare, don't, don't go there anymore. Uh, why? Uh, it's being raided by the police, by NBI. So, so we, that night, we had a good clean pan, so to speak. So we just went drinking in one of the ihaw ihaws there's uh, roasteries um, and then um, and then I told my two brothers-in-law hey don't tell Atime about this uh, and then one of her brothers who's my classmate in uh, Womanizing 101 <laughs> uh, told me uh, Kuya if this is the case uh, my wife won't mind because oh, oh what happened oh, maybe I shouldn't be telling this story bro censored <laughs> yata so so, to cut the long story short, so, so, that night, I couldn't sleep when I came home. And there's a, 
there's a nagging voice in my mind telling me, now, are you ready to tell me about your transgressions? So when, when we came back to Singapore, I told my household head, um, you remember Tito Leo? Uh, they, they, were my, they were our first household head. I told him everything. Uh, you know, bro, whenever I go for business trips, whether Hong Kong, Malaysia, or, you know, I do this, that, that. And I sometimes stop out even uh, to my hotel room. And then uh, Tito Leo said, are you seriously telling me all this? Uh, yes. That's the prompting. And then uh, his reaction is, bro, please don't. Uh, just it's enough that you're promising me that you won't do it again. You promise God that you won't do it again. Uh, just uh, keep it under wraps because I don't know how May will react to this. But I didn't listen to my household then. But uh, you, you guys should listen to your household then, uh, to your DGLs, uh, who will eventually become your household heads. Um, and uh, I told me everything. And uh, of course, for six months, she wasn't talking to me. But yeah. but uh, now we're here. We're okay, right? Uh, so, so well, what was I thinking? Uh, it's illogical. It's irrational to many people. But uh, to me, uh, in our struggles to, to be holy, in our struggles to, to avoid temptations to sin, we cannot do it alone. We need each and every one in this room to remind us every time. And me and my constant companion is my wife, so I better just tell her. So, so she will be my beacon and guiding light every time I digress and uh, turn to sinful life again. So, because it's easy to fall into sinful life, which is why community life is very important, which is why we're still here 14 years. And I think we'll still be here 20 years, 30 years if, if, if we live that long. In, in community. So, so repentance is breaking away from running our own lives. You know, um, I came to Singapore in 1997. Uh, I was really trying to escape a lot from, from the Philippines. Escape from... In fact, remember, I never told you about my assignment to Singapore until, until weeks before, right? Yeah, so... so. Because my mode then was, okay, at least I, I will have another life there and, and that kind of thing. But, but uh, no, God had other plans. Uh, God had other plans. You know, in the, in the condo where we lived, we were surrounded by at least how many CFC members? Three, three or four. So, you know, so, so, but uh, yeah, that that was our early life here in Singapore. We were surrounded by many CFC members. So, so I thought. Um, so yeah, that's repentance, breaking away from running our own lives. Uh, because there was a point in my life uh, I thought I was invincible. Did any one of you thought you were invincible? So, because when we achieve things in life, right? We we especially if we ascribe it to our own to our own talents and uh, and don't even acknowledge that the talents were given by God to us it gets into our head so so this is what repentance is all about it's letting God run our own lives is it amen to that brothers and sisters because the more that we try to run our lives the more messy it could become I've seen it a lot in my life so Repentance, again, is not. This is not a lukewarm response to, to God. It's uh, lukewarmness is completely incompatible with true repentance. When we repent, as uh, Bro Ronnie said earlier, we have to be sincere. We have to mean it. So, what are the two essential characteristics of uh, of repentance? First is honesty. Of course, honesty. We, we cannot begin to, to repent and uh, turn away from our sins unless we acknowledge that we have sinned, right? So, honesty. And then, the second greatest element. So, just remember the two H's. Very important in our Christian life. Honesty and humility. We have to be humble enough to accept that we have done wrong. You know, in the face of God and in the face of our families, in the face of our friends, in the face of colleagues in the office, 
in the face of uh, our brothers and sisters in the community. Hmm. Honesty and humility, two very important characteristics. So next we discuss what is faith. So faith is not just a feeling. It's not a wishful thinking. It's not a blind leap of faith. You, we often hear that uh, expression, right? It's like, uh, but faith is the in Hebrews eleven verse one, we are told faith is the realization of hope. What is hoped for, and evidence of things not seen. That's faith. In the Catechism of the Catholic Church, it, it defines faith as man's response to God who reveals himself and gives himself to man, at the same time bringing man a superabundant light as he searches for the ultimate meaning in life. It's quite deep, but, but I just uh, top out the first part of it, which is man's response to God. God loved us first. He made the initial move. So it's, it's now our, our turn to to answer God's call. Faith is also believing. Another word for faith. is an act of the intellect, assenting to the divine truth by command of the will, moved by God through grace. This is um, St. Thomas Aquinas. So, so I, I'm glad that he's, uh, he's equated faith to grace. It's, it's really a grace from God for us to have faith. Uh, no one can impose faith on us. It's a seed planted there that we have to nurture. Hmm. So, faith is a grace from God. Faith is the belief in the gospel. Hmm. So, the gospel texts, they were written 2,000 years ago. The Old Testament was even older than that. But, Every word in that, every letter in that, every punctuation mark in that is true. So, you have to believe in the gospel. Of course, it's just a book if we don't use it in our own lives. So, we have to, to read beyond what's written in the text as well. Faith is a personal act and decision. As I said, no one can impose that to you. Even if you attend Sunday Masses and then you listen to, to, the, to the priest intently. You have, to, you have to have your own uh, initiative. So it's a personal act and a decision to, make, to be made. So faith, again, is definite. It's individual. It's deliberate. It's urgent. And it's indispensable. Before I go on, uh, I've been, I've uh, specially requested May to to do a sharing uh, before I wrap up the talk. Um, and typically, we don't do sharings anymore for talk four, uh, based on the new guidelines from the National Council and uh, the Christian Life Program. But bear with me; uh, it's just my leading. Because uh, the first thing I ask uh, every time I I give this talk is, how many brothers are there? How many sisters are there? And seeing that there are more sisters than brothers here, uh, I'd like uh, you to all hear the perspective of my wife in what I've been talking about. Uh, uh, I think I told one brother, I think brother Mike. Uh, anyway, bro, uh, our, my belief is the brothers are more simple than sisters, but, but uh, which is why top four is reserved for brothers. Sisters do not give talk for. It's only brothers. Uh, that's the reason for that. Uh, but uh, today, uh, I'd like to call my uh, Triple G <laughs> to, to give her uh, sharing. He did not ask for my permission. <laughs> <laughs> Who heard that? <laughs> no, he did, not, he did not ask for that. Um, he... But I sense that he will call me. And um, the Lord is so wonderful because, see, when you're too weak. <laughs> no, because, um, 
Kuya Tay. Eh, eh. eh, puyat siya, Kaya puyat. Kaya Walang tulog eh. Okay lang po. Ay, talaga binigyan. Pabukas <laughs> naman. So, every morning po kasi, every morning, uh, the first thing that I'll do, and it's by God's grace. Um, Thank you. Every morning, the first thing that I do, conscious or not, is to thank God. Is to ask Him, Lord, what is it that you want me to do? What's your favorite? It's not asking the Lord what's the word for the day. Not like that. He said, Okay, Lord, what's for me today? So this morning, it's so simple. And yet, um, there's an instruction. It's so clear. That thing that you do today, where will it lead you? Okay. So, unlike other days, um, I don't know, I posted it, but I had something else. I said, Sadako paroon, something like that. So, I didn't know what that means. Because just like that, you have to listen to God's prompting. So, um, we woke up late because we were so tired the last few weeks. And then, after a while, my son's girlfriend came to the house. That's the reason why. We're not late because of her, we're late because of something else. Um, she came to the house and then I asked her, why are you here? Where is my son? So she said, Tita, natutulog po. So she's, she's, she came with the helmet, because my son rides a motorbike, and my son is in his room. And then I was trying to wake him up. He was, he was not budging. And I asked the girl, what happened? Tita, she's, she's angry at me. Please don't tell this to my son because the story is not about my son or my son's friend. Ita, um, he's angry at me po. So, why? So, but then again, my son being my son, as hard-headed as the father, he wouldn't even get out of the room. <laughs> While the girlfriend was waiting, right? I was thinking, niligaw-ligawan mo, tapos paghihintayin mo, something like that. So, but I couldn't tell that to my son because I know my son well. So, probably because the girl said, Ita, he's angry at me po. So, I respected that. So, but I told the girl, we need to go to Mass now, so if you're, because they're going to Mass and they are going to the 12.30 Mass at YP. so we went to CDM. So I told her, um, if you're going now, message me. Uh, if you're not going, if, not, if you're unable to go, because I don't think my son will get home. But I didn't tell that to her. But I said, if you're not going, text me so I can buy food. So I just buy food. So she didn't text me when I saw the, the thing after Mass. She didn't text me, but during the Mass, um, my prayer after the confession was not really a prayer of whatever. I just said, thank you, Lord, that you're restoring our lives. And then the restoration in the song, restoration, restoration, restoration. All the while, during the Mass, I was praying for my children's relationships. I was praying for them. Thank you, Lord, um, that you're restoring our lives. It's a thank you, no? But when I looked at that, oh, yeah, praise God. Um, that means they went to Mass. Right? Because the Mass ended about almost one. It's good. That means they went to Mass. So we tap out, fast, fast, fast. Then they came home. My son's girlfriend was sleeping on the sofa. And my son was sleeping in his room. I said, oh my God. But I said, Lord, um, San Kalabit pa po. Because this is how I treat my relationship with God. I see the Lord is alive. Not very far from there. So immediately, Lord, sakal bit pa po. So because I'm afraid that they would be quarreling or whatsoever, right? And not go to mass and whatever happens along that is, you know, you know I mean, going to mass is something that I have inculcated in my children's um, lives. So whatever they're doing, they must go to mass. So Lord, is sakal bit pa po. So after that, I look at my son. He suddenly got a bit like because the door banged. He got that, and then. I thought he went to the toilet to, to bathe or whatever. And I looked back, he was sleeping on the girl's lap. And the girl was also sleeping. Oh my God. So very thankful. I was so thankful. Because, um, and then after that, it was simple. People, let's eat. We, we just tap out food for three people. And the Lord again multiplied the dishes and whatever. We tap out two rice. And then one chicken chop for our girl, and we ate by and fast. We ate without any fight, without anything, and there were still leftovers, so we probably still have dinner at home. 
So what's the meaning of all this, my brothers and sisters, is that as sisters, we are the heir that directs the nail. But probably the brother pushes you in the martyr. What happens when the nail is pushed into by the martyr into the concrete? No one knows, right? Even if you're the best engineer, I don't think you know what really happens on the air or the whatever um, mechanical or whatever chemical measurements. Mm -hmm. We are the air sisters. We are the ones who are so powerful that our prayers would mean more than what we could imagine. So, and the life that we have always needs restoration no matter what. But we don't have to look far. We just have to say, Lord, what have you Lord, the Lord wants us to be confident in our prayer lives. And no matter how no matter how hard our lives are, no matter how how whatever hard headed the people around us, no matter how painful our lives are, no matter how sick we are, no matter how how impossible we look at the things that are happening within us, with our families, with our relatives, just one confident prayer. Because if our prayer is not confident, no one would listen to an unconfident prayer. Because with an unconfident prayer, that means we don't believe in our prayers ourselves. That's the meaning of claiming. So faith for me, brothers and sisters, is that is, has that must have that seal of confidence in the Lord that whatever we pray for he will grant us. And that to me is faith. And that means <laughs> Thank you, Ma. You see? Now you know why I have a triple G. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what's the consequence of uh, repentance and faith? The uh, consequence of repentance and faith is we see clearly uh, God's plan in our lives. We see the promise of salvation. Uh, my wife always calls me... Um, when I say this, but I, I'm saying it again anyway. Because this is my belief. No matter how difficult our lives here are, let's not forget that this is just transitory. Because God has prepared a better life for us in heaven. Of course, that's not to say that we wish that we go to heaven tomorrow. Does anyone here want to go to heaven tomorrow? No, right? We, have, uh, we probably have loose ends to tie first. Right? We have to reconcile with our fathers, with our parents. Uh, I have to do that. I have to reconcile with my siblings also. I have to do that. And uh, all the other people that I've hurt in the process in my 49 years here on earth. So we all have to do that. So, because faith and consequence, uh, repentance and faith, gives us a, a freedom from fear of death. Of course, everyone fears death. But knowing that uh, God is with us, that uh, we are aligned with the will of God, we can face death uh, bravely. I've seen a lot of brothers uh, and sisters suffering illnesses, suffering uh, here in this community, Corpus Profi, suffering illnesses, but continuing to inspire the brethren to carry on with life. So sometimes God just allows things to happen because God wants to inspire everyone through our lives. So, who knows? So, who would have known that uh, 20 years ago I would be uh, giving talks like this? No. Not in my wildest dreams. But now, my take is, maybe God allowed me to experience all those because at least I can talk about it and uh, let uh, prevent uh, other people from experiencing the same. Yeah, so that's why I honor the brothers and the brothers who are here. Uh, I think the average age of the brothers is below thirty. Is it right? You're twenty nine, bro, right? No, no, no. My point is, you're all young, because I said yes to the Lord quite late. Uh, how old was I in two thousand five? Thirty five. I was thirty five years old. If I joined earlier. Maybe I wouldn't have a, had a big fight with my children over petty things. So, of course, the, the most faithful and the greatest uh, example of faithfulness is Mama Mary herself. Imagine, 
at a tender age of uh, everyone, all the scholars believe that she was in her teens, probably between 14 to 16, 17 years old when, when she, she had Immaculate Conception. But despite her young age, and at that time, if uh, you're unmarried and, uh, and you become pregnant, you'll get ostracized. I, not just at that time, I guess at this time also. Huh? So you'll get stoned at that time. But no, despite those consequences, she just said, yes, let it be done to me according to thy word. So that's, uh, we should all emulate Mama Mary. Hmm. So we are all called to turn away from our sin and to accept Jesus as our, as our Lord. So, so I hope this is not the last time I'll, I'll see your wonderful faces. So I hope you carry on in the next uh, eight or seven weeks to go and then graduate and then become um, active servant leaders in Couples for Christ in a, in a year's time, in two years' time. Because the work of our Lord is very important and, and it's urgent. So we are all called. So expect to experience joy and power in our lives when we say yes to, to God. So as I said, I postponed it five times, but maybe I should have said yes in 2000. Yeah. So just a little bit background. Um, this is my dad. Um, before I end this talk, uh, it, the talk is not complete without me telling the story of my dad. I come from a broken family, and I used to justify this. Uh, because my, my dad and mom separated when I was five years old. Uh, and um, during our early part, the early part of our marriage, I used to justify my gallivanting, my drinking, my gambling, my womanizing to me. Oh, my dad used to do that. At least I'm taking care of the family. But no, dad's, uh, dad's in the room. That's not our only job in the family. You have to be the... We have to be the, the the bearer of good news to the family. We have to we have to be to be the preacher in the family. We have to be nurturing our children. Uh, nurturing is not just the job of the mothers. So, so, but that was that was me before. That was what I thought. But uh, you know what? In the I just remember sometime in 2000, 2001, in the most rockiest part of our married life, when I was about to give up. And May, I guess at that time she also wanted to give up. I called my dad out of the blue. And you know what? Uh, I think uh, God spoke through my dad that night. Because even before I could speak a word, my dad just said this, Bert, whatever is happening to you and me, do not let what happened to your mom and me happen to your own family. Imagine that, my dad. My dad who doesn't go to church. My dad who abandoned his family when I was five years old. Being used by God. So that's just it. And for that, may God be praised.